Yo, YouTube, what's going on, guys? So today for this video, I got five things you need to know about MLB The Show 24, five things that will help you in your experience for this game, things that I think are very important, core things to this game. It's a little bit different. It's going to be a combined settings video, uh, spoilers, more spoilers with a little bit of uh, pitching tips, but not, and there's not enough tips for me to give on pitching. It's been the same for years. You can watch any of my old videos to learn how to pitch in this game that involve pinpoint going back to 22 or uh, 21, excuse me to learn about pinpoint, but there are some tricks that are unique to 24 since they made a few changes to, you know, lefty pinpoints a thing now and sinkers are different, blah, blah, blah. We'll go over that. And it's, it's going to be a little bit of a consolidation of things. And there actually are some nice little secrets uh, for this new Diamond Dynasty uh, experience that will help you um, earn more packs and get TA done faster. And we'll save those for the very end. First up, we're going to go with our settings. We're going to go through it. Some of this is just my settings that I like, but some of these things are actually nice recommendations that I think really help your experience. Uh, you can ignore these for now. These don't really matter. We can go over to uh, decisions. I like to turn off, if you hit RT, I like to turn off auto defensive shift. I don't like that on. I don't like auto shift. If you like shift being on, fine. I don't like it. I don't like letting up flukes down the line. It's just me. Next up, go over again. Nothing. Hit right trigger again. CPU pitch delay. This is a big one. Pitcher keeps a quick pace with minimal delay between pitches. It starts on normal. Switch that to faster. I implore you to do so. It makes the grind against the CPU so much better. Moments, everything. Everything is so much better. Uh, I believe this is it. This is a uh, player lock stuff for like road to the show, I guess. So I'm not really involved in that. Uh, to be honest, uh, over to control for offense. I uh, these, are, these are my settings. You guys can just take a picture of it if you want. I'll go through it. Um, I don't use PCI Anchor. It's just not the feature we were looking for, at least for me. I want sensitivity, not sensitivity mixed with like an, a lock at the same time, which is kind of weird. I have just bat on, no inner, no outer. Cyan is the color, 50% opacity. That's kind of it. I have vibration on because why not? Defense. I use pinpoint. I have pitch trail on. Um, I don't care if it stays on. I want to see it the whole time. I'm not playing split screen, so I'm not worried about anyone cheating. Uh, throwing interface button accuracy, obviously the best. Throw canceling, have that on. It started on this year for me. I think you used to have to turn it on, but it starts on. Definitely very important. So you could pump fake. If, if you make a mistake and try and throw a base, you can cancel it, throw it another base. It's great. Catch position indicator. It started on drifting ball this year for me, which is interesting because they did introduce that new blue line stuff, which I hated it. What is it called? Track ball. I hated that. I think it was weird and not very intuitive. So drifting ball makes more sense to me. I like it. Um, that's just my opinion, though. So whatever you guys like. Uh, player lock, don't care about any of that. And that's it for uh, the settings there. Presentation, I didn't change uh, any of this. Batter walk up. Oh, wait a minute. I just realized. I think you could turn this off. And I think in offline games, you don't want your hitter walk up anymore. So you could just kind of fly through. I could be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure that actually is a thing. That's a thing. Turn that off if you want to have quicker offline games. I don't know why battle walk-ups are an online. It's not a huge deal, but I feel like it would make ranked games go faster. But anyway, moving on. Audio video, big one here. So we're going to go here. I turn off commentary, PA, and music. Music because DMCA plus um, they get annoying after a while. PA, just why? Commentary, they get annoying after a while. They say the same four things. Crowd volume, I have a little bit. Just have a little bit of ambiance, but apparently there's like some bugged ass noise with the crowd volume this year and making like a static sound. So I have it low. I don't know what movie audio is. Um, I'm going to be real. I think that has something to do with storylines and some sort of cutscene thing. So I'm going to keep that on. Defensive music and music reverb on, whatever, whatever you guys want. Where are my camera angles? Oh, there we go. Camera, hitting view. I hit on strike zone, pitching view, strike zone high. In play view, offense, dynamic. I like to watch the pimp jobs of the hitter. I think it's cool. That's why I have that. High for defense. You get to zoom out of the whole field. That's what I like. Um, I think that's everything. I think I covered everything here. Oh, off the wall, off the wall ribbon. I put this on to see where the carom is. Very cool. I like that. That's pretty much it. I think I don't think I missed anything there. I think I covered all that. So those are all the settings. And now on to a little bit of pitching tips. We're going to hop into custom practice. And I'm going to tell you guys how I'm going to approach this new pitching this year, especially with lefties and with new pitches. Okay, we'll bounce around here because of some pitches. So first, yo, what up, guys? We're back. We'll cut back to this. We're here. Hello, here, back again. Pitching tips. Nothing crazy new. Pinpoint still pinpoint, but there are a few things. It seems pinpoint's a little more sensitive this year, and there are lefty pinpoint movements. Um, we'll start with a normal lefty movement that's not a different and unique movement in itself. Sliders. It's the same thing as it's always been. If you guys see, it's just mirrored because it's a lefty. I don't know why that happened with that. This is Johan Santana, by the way, just practicing with him. They are, a lot of offline legends are in the roster. So, yeah, as you guys see, I don't know why it bugs out a little bit when I do that. But 
Uh, it's just the same as a slider. It's just a lefty. It's just flipped. It's mirrored. Any tips I have on that specifically, like always, really hold your stick down when you're doing these motions because it's very sensitive. And if you're not fully holding it down, it doesn't really read it all the way. That's one thing that Xbox does not have over PlayStation. PlayStation, the pitching is so much easier. You have to really go out of your way to pitch on, on Xbox. I'm better than this, I promise. Okay, next up, this is the real one. These are where the tips start. Sinkers, that's a whole new motion entirely. This is what a lefty sinker looks like. For righties, righties, it's the same thing. It's just flipped. So here's the, the kicker with this one. It's very weird. It's like a fork ball, but just on its, uh, its vertical. I'm still getting used to it myself, but two things you can remember. You always, always, always hold it really hard down. And if you think you're going too slow, go slower. It, I promise you, you're going to think you're going really slow with it. Go slow. I promise. It feels really slow. Really, really be methodical and draw out this motion. I promise you, if you think, if you think you're going too slow, you're not going slow enough. It, it always blows my mind. And I'm sure in the stretch, it's going to be even weirder. Uh, the stretch gets a little more complicated. But those are my two biggest tips. Really hold it down. It's more like you're like... I don't even know how to explain it. It's almost like you're, you're like if you were painting, right? You're not going to keep lifting the stroke off the paper. You, if you're trying to really like be gentle, you're going to shade it in kind of like this. It's like that. You really have to push and go slow, really overemphasize the motion. And if you're all else fails, just watch the watch the motion right in front. I watch it do it for it gives you an example. Watch that example, the timing example. I feel like it's easier to mimic like in those old like movement games, like Mario Party or like WarioWare, where you have to repeat an action, or like a Wii game. It was just easier to do it after you've already seen it, like right after you've seen it. Just easier that way. There are some other tricky things too. I don't think this pitch changed as much. Uh, I know sweeping curves. Who has a sweeping curve? Knuckle curves got got to change. That's an example. That's crazy. It's a Soviet Union. Uh, I, Jesus, the the uh, is it a hammer and sickle? <laughs> This is my first time. That was my first time doing a knuckle curve this year. I don't know why they decided in the year that they tried to buff curveballs by making them a little bit more uh, central in, the, in the, the par. Like if you throw it perfect, it goes towards the middle. In that same year, they buffed it. They made knuckle curves, which were arguably the worst pitch in the game, even harder to throw. Uh, interestingly enough, while sliders are so easy, change-ups, all that stuff, cutters, it's just a little interesting. Um, curveballs are fine, but knuckle curves are shot. It's just weird, but for for this one, getting into tips for this, same deal, guys. Really hold it down. You don't even have to go the whole way, right? So watch. You don't even have to go the whole way if you don't want to. The most the most important thing is you don't release the tension. You have tension the whole time, and you are really going slow. See? You don't even have to finish it. The slower you go, the better. That's kind of the biggest tip I have for you guys with uh, this new pitching see it's 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 good don't get frustrated too if you mess it up it's gonna happen there's a seagull in this stadium freaking out see i loosen i had no tension there and it reads it as i'm going too fast there we go that was the speed difference if you guys watched that back was the same exact thing i just had more tension on the stick if you lose tension it acts like you're going too fast because the stick is pulling back towards the middle it's very bizarre but those are my pitching tips for this i'm pretty sure i covered it i know the sweeping curve is uh weird too it's very strange but it's not that much more strange than a knuckle curve it's essentially the same thing so whatever the motion may be guys just remember tension 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 be slow be methodical and with the knuckle curve you don't have to finish it the whole way so there's a little tip for you on that one on to uh a third little tip here. it's a little more simple and it's within diamond dynasty you can go right to it go over to your collections go all the way it's just, it sounds silly but go over here go to uniforms guys collect your uniforms you get a bunch of these for playing for doing ta for doing grinds and you get a bunch of packs people forget to do this they forget to do this don't quick sell your jerseys keep them you get packs and stubs it will probably help you in the long run i promise same with alternates um at five of these you get five show packs i'm really close to getting um for the throwbacks for nl and al i am one away and two away from getting five packs each it's very helpful Trout, Otani, Mookie Betts, Aaron Judge, they could be right behind these packs and you have no idea. You don't want to give up on that. After you get these packs, you get these like nifty jerseys, but oh, that's hideous. 
and some stubs. The stubs are more important, to be honest. That's a tip there. And part two to this, collect this. I know this isn't as imp important to you, but there are stubs. Every stub counts. If you just play the game passively, collect this, get these stubs, and then use these stubs to flip, uh, you can actually make a good amount of uh, money in this game if you if you put the time into it. I haven't started flipping yet, but I am no money spent, so I'm right here with you guys this year. I'm, I didn't buy collections, so I'm giving you all the tips that I'm going through and doing myself. Easy, but it's a real thing. It's something people don't really think about, and some people don't even know it's there. It's, it's genuinely a thing. And also, if you open that millionaire pack and you get that try again nonsense, go over to exchanges. It's stupid. It happened to me already. Even for that shitty little voucher where it tells you you got coach and it says try again, huh? You get 100 stubs. But um, this is where you exchange this stuff. And another little tip here. You guys might not know this. You can exchange a season one cornerstone captain for a season one cornerstone captain pack. I don't... I, I'm not sure. Here's the thing. I just want to be very clear. I don't know if you could... Oh, I think I collected him. Or he's in my lineup. If you collect him or... If, I, 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 let me see if I collected this box. In. I don't think I collected him. I just think he's in my lineup. These cards are no sell already. So I think it's because he's in my lineup. I think that's what it, what it is. If I take him out on, he's on so many lineups, I'm not going to take him out. He's, uh, so whatever. But if you take him out of your lineup, I believe you can exchange him. I'm not sure if you can just keep doing this to keep trying it. I, I think it might have been once a season. I haven't tried. And to be honest with you, I don't want to try right now in case it's only once a season. I like Bucks and he's killing it for me. But this is something to keep in mind. If you accidentally pick the wrong player or if you really just want to try again and get somebody else, this is somebody to look at right or something something to look at there's something to consider right if you if you picked nolan arenado by mistake and you want buxton or maddox or senga you can go in here and exchange it you're not perma locked into it and you can make the moves you need to make the fact that senga has 99 break on his slurve and not his ghost fork is a joke moving on oh my god moving on uh okay so uh that was tip number three it's a little bit of like dot your i's cross your t's nothing insane here but things people don't realize are there or they might forget to do on to number four this one's a little bit more of strategy how to maximize your team this is more from a no money spend perspective it's not about just going out and getting cards it's about knowing how to go out and get cards and how to build your team how to how to go out and build a team as quick as possible so i'll give you an example this is my team the fuxton team it's byron buxton captain he's over here right now cornerstone what does he boost he gives you plus 15 powers 10 speed 10 fielding ability for 11 hitters with under 60 vision on your squad wish it was 60 and under but it's whatever this is an incredible boost. What you have to reach threshold wise for under 60 is a little bit tricky at times, and it's not great to have low vision, but that boost more than makes up for it. It turns all these guys into bona fide BR gods early in the year through veteran, all-star, and even sometimes in Hall of Fame. Even though you have low vision, these numbers will play. It is, in my opinion, the definitive best captain. I don't really think it's close. I haven't experimented with Maddox. I'm interested, but that's just my opinion. And I'll give you an example of why this is so good. So this is what my team looks like. I bought this guy from, you get plus 18 contact versus right? It's such a random number. I bought him from the uh, uh, store pack. It was 25K for the pack to get him. He's, he's only featured in those packs. But if you guys see my team, what do you see a lot of? You see a lot of the spring breakout program cards. Follow me. One of the starter programs. This is gonna be tied into this, right? Do these first. This is my tip. Do these programs first. They're so easy. You can finish them passively. Do this spring breakout program. If you guys are wondering where this giant box is behind me, don't worry about it. It's a surprise. I promise. Um, so why is this program important? Let's go through it. Manzardo, 60 vision, but that's at P1. He starts out with 59. It's about what you are at base. Parallel levels do not affect captain threshold requirements. So he was 59 vision to start. He actually made it by one point. And Manzardo becomes a G on the Buxton team. Tamar Johnson, 50 vision right now. He started with 49. Harry Ford, he also had 59 vision. It's like they're crafted for this. Uh, he's a pitcher. Mike Wazowski over here is pretty good. James Wood, 34 vision. That is, it's very low. And trust me, you feel it. He still rakes, but you feel it with the swings and misses. But another card who is incredible and essentially five tool for early on in the year. Colson Montgomery does not make it with 67, but he's still a very good card to get. And over here at the end, Dylan Cruz, 54 vision. So all of them besides Mike Wazowski and Colson Montgomery fit that boost and they're free. You do a showdown, you do missions with the cards or whatever the whatever it says to do here, multiplayer missions, uh, regular missions here with all the cards individually and moments, you can do all the moments. It is super light, super easy, very passive. You get packs along the way. I highly, highly recommend it. And this is what I'm talking about. 
you this is how you build a no money spend team fast and you make the most out of it so you min max your team now let's go through it so you guys saw those cards um this is what dylan cruz looks like normally without any boost with the boost this is what we got he's a 91 91 fielding rating 95 speed 195 powers respectively for against righties and lefties another example manzardo 101 power versus right 97 power versus left 87 fielding over there 49 speed which is he gives him doubles speed now teetering almost double speed which is like 50 i think but he's getting close he started out with 39 which is incredibly slow tamar johnson 185 100 power 85 power 91 fielding 79 speed that is huge he's an, he's been incredible for me man just an absolute freak uh mondesi doesn't does not fit into that program but th this guy's like a must if you have the bucks in team he's an incredible pickup look how good he is it's stupid uh over to stanton stanton is a ta card so this is not part of the spring breakout but it's about building your team nl east season one chapter one team infinity takes stanton gets him to 107 102 power 89 fielding 72 speed that's a stand who's legitimately really good in the outfield and at uh parallel one he's a diamond in right field silly Harry Ford, he is someone from the Spring Breakout program. 89 and 94 powers, respectively, with a fantastic swing. And he's got uh, 92 speed and 81 fielding, 86 arm. He is a budget JT Romuto. In fact, he's better than Live Series JT. He goes from an 85 to a 91 overall. Cruz, 89 to a 94. 85 to a 91 for Tamar Johnson. 85 to 91 for Monsardo. It is really, really silly. Woods on the bench because of the way the team is set up. Uh, look, look what it does to live series Ian Happ. 80 power, 71. It turns them all into demons. Adolis Garcia happens to fit that bill. There are a few more players, I think, that fit this. Um, that I have. Sean Murphy, JT Romuto actually fits this, which is very interesting, actually. Very interesting. Can be very solid. But Harry Ford's better in that card, so it is what it is. But that's how you build a team, guys. It's, but it's a bit of a more detailed, thorough tip here in a top five, or like a five list. But... It's important. This is how you build your team. You go out and find cards that fit your team, and then you get the most out of them. It turns this team into a bunch of savages. Uh, it's really, really solid, and it get, you can get the most out of your squad. Now, on to the last tip. I promise you all a little bit of a secret for TA, and I'm, I'm not going to fail to deliver. I promise you. It's going to really streamline your experience. Follow me. See how I have 100% of NL East done, and I've barely even done TA. How did I do that? Well... First, I did a showdown for the East, and I did all the things I needed to do to get to my first pack. Because you need to get to the first pack for this to work. This little method, I guess. Not really a method, it's part of the game. Then you take Billy Wagner. No questions about it. You take Billy Wagner. I don't care who you want. You take him first. All right, all right, stop. Shut up, please. It's awful. Follow me to single player missions all the way down here. Read this with me. Innings pitched with NLE bosses. Repeatable. Tally three innings with Billy Wagner in single player Diamond Dynasty game modes. That's offline guys 10,000 ta points for three innings with billy wagner and it's repeatable what does that mean every conquest stronghold game you play if you pitch him all the innings he gets 10,000 per game i finished it like this two birds one stone with this i got i used him and conquest at the same time to get a ton of these pro um uh, like a ton of these program points Along the way, I flew through these packs. I got them like it was it was hotcakes. Took Stan for my um I took Stanton next for my Buxton team. Then I took right, I took the rest of them, and I just started using them to get total bases, and I finished this in no time flat. Now, does this apply to every TA division? No. And I'll tell you why. AOS is the only other one that applies to. Why is that? Because there's only reliever, there's only relievers in this one too. So you can use Leclerc, Leclerc or Iglesias. They're both relievers. You can follow me all the way down here. Same thing. Because they're relievers, you could use Iglesias and Leclerc or Leclerc and or three innings pitch. You could use both of them back to back once you get both of them to save energy, whatever, against the computer, mini seasons, conquest, whatever. It's the only one it works for. Now follow me for an example on why it won't work over here. There is a reliever, Class A, in this one, but there's also a starter, Zach Granke, unfortunately. If you go down here, because it's a starter, they raise the ceiling. Starters are nine innings, which is still really solid. This is still what you should approach, right? You should use this. This is the one. This is light work, right? Conquest, three Conquest games get you 10K each time if you're using a starter. Absolutely. Absolutely what you guys should do first if you want to fly through TA and get as many cards as possible. Packs, stubs, whatever. NL East showdown, or just the East showdown in general, but focus on the NL East. I just happened to do that one first because I like, I'm like i a Mets fan. I, then someone told me about the Wagner thing, so shout out to guys who told me about that. 
I did not discover this. I'm not taking credit for it. I'm just letting y'all know using my platform to spread this around. I finished that first. I'm going to jump to the West Conquest, specifically focusing on AOS to get a first reliever. And then I'm going to start going crazy and I'm going to finish the AOS next. It's going to give me a lot of cards for TA. It's going to give me a lot of stubs, a lot of packs, a lot of experience, all that. And then I will tackle everything else in between. Um, but in, in that process, I will be done with the East and the West uh, Conquests. And uh, then I'll figure out what to do. Uh, I know showdowns are repeatable. That was already, that's been mentioned a bunch of times. I know everyone looked at that. But honestly, in my experience, guys, showdown doesn't get you that many points for all the vouchers. I'm sure it's a way to do it. I will keep experimenting with that and see, and I will test showdown again. But for sure, number one little trick, little hack here. The relief pitcher stuff get the nl east and the al west tackle that first and do those conquests and then work backwards that's pretty much it guys a little bit of a longer video i hope this helps and uh let me know what you guys think i will uh catch you guys later i hope you guys have been enjoying this kind of content on ochev too i love giving it to you man i love giving you this kind of content it's the, i like talking about game theory and giving you guys a little help you know tips and things i learned so catch you guys next video peace